Okay, well, there's a lot to break down in this sprint qualifying slash FP1 section. Again, sprint weekend, uh, lots to talk about. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe if you're new, throw me a like if you got a second, and let's get into the USGP. So, coach of this week, we have the only free practice session. It was actually pretty interesting. Uh, considering they crammed so much in there. Not a lot of long runs. I think the most laps we had on fuel was like five or six laps. Uh, a lot of people running the hard tires. I suspected that the hard tire is going to be the way to go because it is so warm. Um, we got from the Holiness here, uh, at F1 Big Data. So long runs, we have softs for Perez and Verstappen, mediums for Botas and everybody else on hards. And if you look at the dot matrix here, you can see uh, the good ones to look for are here. The Claire Sainz, Norris, Russell, those are everybody really, really crammed together. When all those times are very close together, you usually have a pretty good idea where people are. These outliers here are on weird push laps or ones where they're just barely in. So you can see the actual times, kind of this little graph. And then you have no idea with Botas. He looks pretty tight with all the times there. And then Perez faster than Verstappen. Not a lot to learn from FP1 session, to be perfectly honest. All that we know is that everybody is all over the place with their overall kind of race plans. So, but that probably the hard tire is going to be the way to go. Uh, this is, uh, Lewis spinning out. He just, uh, where you can see the curb is up here, he just barely tapped that curve. And I mean like barely tapped that curve. And he gets snap over steer, the rear went out and he did a double 360, I think, and ended up coming across back onto the track. Amazing that he didn't have an actual accident or that it didn't like flip over or something like that because he was hitting those curbs and more importantly off the curbs uh really sideways most of the way so pretty interesting uh to see that from him not usually what happens to hamilton in an fp1 session but i guess that's the way it is not much else happened in fp1 everybody was just kind of doing their race plans uh there are a lot of upgrades which we will go over but uh, this is the sprint qualifying so out first we had Zhao botas Albon, Esteban Ocon, and Oscar Piastri. Uh, I will make sure to note that Liam Lawson is starting from somewhere last year. I think he has a 60 place grid penalty. So he'll start when he last raced uh, for RB. <laughs> it's been so far back. It's just crazy how many positions he's lost. So they took every element you could possibly take because he was going to have a grid penalty anyway. So. Uh, he's gonna start from the back of the grid. So shift everybody up one here basically and then you're good So the biggest things for the Q1 is Oscar Piastri uh, Again track limits doesn't look like I do I did take a look at all the different track limits not you know, on camera But just myself and it looks like and it seems like from FP1 There were tons of track limits and from sprint qualifying that they haven't quite gotten This track to make sense when it comes to self-policing turn 15 12 the last corner and the second last corner and turn one all of those so there's like four or five places where they're kind of looking like and also if they get the s's wrong the penultimate s corner is really hard to make um they can actually go over it and miss the whole corner so like, sort of like you would do at canada when you completely miss one of the chicanes so uh there's like four or five, maybe six places where they can kind of go off track and be held from track limits, which is not good. We've been really, really good recently. There's a lot of places that have got pretty much knocked down. We saw Austria, which was over a thousand uh, instances of track limits over the weekend down to three uh, just by adding some of this gravel. And it doesn't look like they've done it here. So uh, that's unfortunate. It just means that the qualifyings are kind of compromised in a lot of those ways. Uh, if it wasn't for that, Oscar Piastri, would have made it through. Probably Alexander Albon, who's the other one that was kind of the outlier. He did a 360 uh, turn 15, I think. Or maybe it was turn 12. It was just before the end, I believe. So he just caught it on the inside curb, uh, where I was talking about earlier, and he did a spin around. So not that big of a deal, but uh, still a disappointing for him. Who do we got up next? So Verstappen on pole, obviously. Uh, good job from him. Uh, really, because that car looks like a big bag of nails. If you went through here on these sessions, these are the hard tires being faster than the... Uh, obviously, Botas, we're not going to say that he's going to be quick on a medium tire. Doesn't look like the medium tire is really good either. Uh, but to see Verstappen 
not necessarily Perez. He looks pretty good there. We're gonna assume these are fuel loads issues, but I don't know why you would do a long run on non-heavy fuel loads. I mean, maybe one driver, but not all of the drivers. That's just very concerning for those guys on their long runs. I suspect that he will be okay in the sprint, uh, but he's got to face off against George Russell in the first corner because Georgia finished P2. Uh, let's go to the next people that were out. We have Liam Lawson, Fernando Alonso, Lance Stroll, Pierre Gasly, and Sergio Perez. So kind of the normal people to get out there. Um, Fernando Alonso wasn't able to put in a lap. It looked like he was going to be able to do a low 34, maybe even a mid 34 to get himself out, but he couldn't do that. Uh, and Franco Colapinto snuck through in 10th um, to do a Q3. So uh, I think... Out of all these guys, really, really surprising Sergio Perez. Uh, he did look fairly, fairly consistent in FP1. Uh, obviously, he beat Max, so, I mean, there's not much else to take away from that. He just couldn't put the lap together. He, uh, he did uh, a fast lap, and then he did a lap time that was even, it, was, it improved, but really not by much. So he was in 10th in his first run and 10th in his second run, and then he just got bumped out by um, Yuki Sonona, actually, was the one who bumped him out. So that was pretty bad, and both the Hasses made it through. So let's uh, go through the top 10. So Franco Colapinto, uh, most impressed with this weekend, again, beating Alexander Albon, but also looking very, very quick out on the road. Uh, he's my favorite guy to watch right now because he is just so new. Uh, and I saw a pretty good quote from um, YouTube F1 people uh, saying that uh, Bortoletto is amazing, but Franco Colapinto is doing it in the car this year, and he looks very, very strong. Uh, I would say he would probably be the guy I would put into the um, Audi seat or the Stake F1 seat, whatever they're calling it for this year. So your top 10, Franco Calpino, Yuki Sonona, Kevin Magnussen, Lewis Hamilton, Nico Rosberg, Carlos Sainz, Lendo, Charles, George, and rounding off with Max. Now, George and Max, George put in a really good time. I would watch out for George. Uh, if he's able to handle it on the first corner, uh, which is a bit of a corner at uh, at Kota, we know that big, big left-hander as you go up the hill. Uh, many bad things can happen there, especially if you're uh, P2. Uh, you'll be start you'll be starting on the inside, so you'll want to hit that. And usually, I want to say like four to five times, you're going to have an accident going up in there with those first guys. We saw Carlos Sainz in previous years have a bad time up and through there. We saw Nico Rosberg and Hamilton uh, be very close in previous years. So it's really going to be the corner to watch out for. I think I would rather be Leclerc and Lando coming into that. Uh, good to see Nico and Kevin Magnussen uh, up there. They brought a ton, of, a ton of upgrades to the car, like an entirely new floor. So let's quickly go through some of the people here. Uh, so on pole there, again, this is the upgrades that we had this weekend. We got Ferrari with nothing, Williams with nothing. So considering the Ferrari has not brought anything, they are doing absolutely well. So that Monza upgrade that they had months past uh, is really still doing the hard work. Funny enough, not all the cars are doubly upgraded. McLaren doesn't have a new front wing for both the cars. I believe there's only a partial upgrade for Red Bull on one of the cars. Uh, Mercedes is missing some bits from one of the cars. Uh, it's just very odd I found that uh, they didn't bring everything to every car given that they've had a four week break, then a few races and then a four week break. So. It's very odd to see that happen. Uh, but this is a ton of upgrades, especially from McLaren, who is so far ahead as far as car development goes to bring that much more upgrades. Uh, it's going to take two full sets of upgrades for the Ferrari and the Red Bull to catch back up to kind of where McLaren is in the in the scheme of things. So this is the biggest one for me is the Mercedes upgrades though. This is the this is the old one, how it was undercut there. I think I have a better one of that as well. Uh, and this is the new one, that underbite really kind of coming through. We saw that with the Haas and the Williams car as well. Both of them have this. The Haas, uh, this is the stuff they brought. Side plot in it, floor body, fences, edge, rear corner, uh, the engine cover, and the cooling louvers. So like it's a, basically a brand new car. Tons of stuff on that thing. Um, and then yeah, those were mentioning it. Toby was mentioning here that the, they only have one front wing and they're going to switch it between both cars and then Lando's going to run it for the rest of the weekend. Hard to say if it's good or not, but we'll see. 
Um, where is that other picture that I, here it is. This is the other commissioner than new and the old. So that's the difference in that underbite there. Really working that air underneath that, uh, that air pod. Completely like 180 from, remember the no pod Mercedes? Completely 180, they're gone. Not so much that it's like that bathtub Ferrari kind of stuff that they used to have, but like totally, totally different dynamic than what they had. The complete underbite from having no pods whatsoever. So pretty interesting. Um, yeah, okay, so yeah, that's that there. And this is, this is the funny bit. So this is uh, the Red Bull, the Chief Red Bull Mechanics explaining i like that they got the the floor picture in here they're trying to cover it up but they won't by the camera they're showing the fia how they go about adjusting their tea tray and how complicated it is to do it now what they're kind of getting at is that it's a shortcut to having to take the whole front end of the car off in order to make this uh, mass damper underneath the where the tea tray is make that adjustment but it seems like they're trying to tell the fia that it's a lot of work to do it anyway so then why are you doing it? If it's not faster, what's the point of all of this? Um, the biggest thing for me is that they say they need to take the front nose off. It's hard for me to say, I don't know. It seems as though they wouldn't need to take the front nose off because that's the hole where you adjust the brakes and where you adjust the pedals. So all you would have to say in Park Fermi, which you're allowed to chus adjust pedals in Park Fermi, all you gotta say is, my driver has requested uh, that I need to change uh, the, the pedal placement and then the FIA comes over and watches you do it. Now you could adjust your mass damper while you're there and your tea tray. So I, I don't know, I'm not sold. It seems like a lot of work still. I can't imagine if the FIA, like, cause you gotta call him over to do it, right? So I'm adjusting pedals. He comes, walks over you and watches you over without touching anything very diligently as you adjust the pedals. And then he confirms that you did adjust the pedals. So uh, how they could do this in Park Fermi without them noticing, um, there's only one way that they could do it. Uh, that's because this is the FIA and how they check all the cars. <laughs> I was just, yeah, I, oh yeah, we checked them. I think, I suspect that the FIA are somewhat overwhelmed when it comes to how you do inspections because there's so many things that have come up and many people have mentioned it that it seems like they're putting a lot of faith into Formula One teams to do the right thing. And if we all know the way the Formula One worked and has been since probably the 70s, uh, none of these guys are in it for the spirit of the sport or to do the right thing or any of that kind of stuff. The thin line that separates innovation and cheating is meant to be bent and most of the time broken for every single one of these teams. There are no exceptions. Red Bull is not an angel. Neither is Austin Martin, neither is Haas, none of them. They're all guilty and they've all been guilty in the past. And that's just the stuff we know about. So, I mean, it's it's really up to the FIA to, to police this kind of stuff. And it seems to me as though they're just doing a really bad job. They're saying to McLaren, hey, please, uh, yeah, your wing, it passed. I know our checks suck, but please uh, fix it because we don't like the look of it. Whenever you get a minute to do that, go ahead. And now it's Red Bull. Yeah, we're going to go in and check that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks good. Okay, I guess you're good then. Yeah, I guess you can't change that. I got, uh, I got some money to spend on some of the fines we had for people crossing the track gotta get some wine in so like it just seems kind of stupid to me so that's that there and then i thought this was really weird this is the one thing people weren't covering this but a, a karting prodigy this young man is 10 years old and he has been recruited by williams now he is just a young lad 10 seems a bit young um, and he debuted at age six. So he's obviously a prodigy. I don't know anything about him other than Lucas Palatino. I don't know, where's he from? Yeah, seems to be a karting prodigy. I don't uh, know why you would recruit. I know they've recruited fairly young, but usually F4 is kind of like, like they'll watch people in karting 100%. Everybody who watched karting 20 years ago knew Lewis Hamilton was gonna be somewhere near the top of the pecking order when it came to some of the feeder series uh, and he was and he was recruited very young same with max verstappen we knew he was going to be good there he is both the leclerc got leclerc boy uh, both the yeah the leclerc boys were were gunning for it they were they were always going to be up there took stock very low but man to actually sign somebody at age 10 is kind of crazy okay let's go back to uh, this, not much else to say. I think it's going to be an interesting uh, race tomorrow. Keep in mind that the McLarens, it's really weird to see Piastri and Sergio Perez not 
in the top 10, they're going to be fighting through the field trying to get a couple points out of there because keep in mind, they are still, particularly Red Bull, they're trying to get a lot of points, not only to defend off Lando for the championship, but to try to keep themselves in second from Ferrari. And Ferrari look very strong here. So uh, I think Perez and Piastri will bomb through the field until they get to the Haases because Kevin Magnussen doesn't get an infox. He, ha he can't be disqualified anymore really he'd have to do like five bad moves every race for the rest of the year and he's already said he doesn't really care he doesn't drive next year he's got no stake in the game so he's just going to be like um big boy kevin he's going to be like super wide boy he's going to be hard to pass lewis obviously didn't have a great time in qualifying he went out too early and he couldn't get the car set up properly in order to get the time in because george did it at exactly the same time and was five tenths faster than him but he'll be hard to pass and nico will be hard to pass so once they get to eighth to sixth i think they'll kind of stall out um it really will depend a lot on the first lap and what that kind of looks like if max and george or leclerc and norris or science come through or something like that we'll have to see uh, it'll be hard to say. I think third and second are a better placement than first and second for the first turn, especially at Kota, that uh, it's a long way down to first, the first corner. So lots of draft going on there. I suspect we will see a four wide, uh, to be perfectly honest. Uh, that all depends on uh, Leclerc is an excellent starter. So off the line anyway, not converting, but still. That's the stuff to watch for. I think it's going to be a very interesting Weekend. Then we have the qualifying for the main race. After that, tomorrow should be very busy. Uh, enjoy your sprint race tomorrow and qualifying. I will be here with videos after each of them. Thanks for joining me. Subscribe if you're new. Throw me a like if you got a sudden, and I'll see you guys next time.